Thank you so much for clicking on this video today and visiting with me here on my channel, Heidi Sambal DIY. In today's episode, we are going to be talking and making different containers from the Dollar Tree to make them look farmhouse high end. And we're going to be crafting all of these different ideas for decoration and organizing purposes that you can use around your home. All right, now let's get crafting. This inspiration came from Antique Farmhouse. I love these crates, but I would not pay $89 for them. So we're gonna use some supplies from the Dollar Tree, two of these chalkboard frames, and then 10 of these painter sticks that you can get from a home improvement store. And then we're gonna simply start by putting three on the shorter side of the chalkboard frames. I put some hot glue down first and then I used my staple gun and stapled it into place. So you can see I've got three on each of the shorter sides and then on the bottom side, I've got four more. So at this point, it's created this cute darling little crate and completely on budget for a little bit under $3. Now I'm going to take some black paint, brown paint and water, mix it all together to create a faux stain and now I'm gonna just simply paint that right onto the box itself. And it absorbs in, still showing the wood grain and it looks so much like the inspiration. Then I'm going to come in with some white paint and dry brush on it to distress it a little bit and make it look more rustic farmhouse and then sand where I've got too much. And here it is, the inspiration versus mine where I've saved a ton of money. For my next look for less inspiration, I'm going to be using this beautiful basket stand from Antique Farmhouse and we're going to do it for a whole lot cheaper, about 10 bucks to be exact. I'm going to be using four of these baskets, gold baskets from the Dollar Tree, and then four of these mop poles, and then a whole bunch of zip ties. <laughs> we use a lot of zip ties in this project. Now one of my favorite things to get off these stickers really easy is just using this heat gun that I have. I'll link it down below if you're looking for a good heat gun. I love this one. I use it all the time. I'm going to heat up the sticker and then it peels off with no issues at all. Then I'm going to take two of those broom poles or mop poles and I'm going to zip tie them up at the top of the basket. Now you're going to want to zip tie them as tight as you can and push down those little nubs when you've got it nice and tight. I would recommend, you can see me cutting them here, but I would recommend as I moved on with the project, I decided not to cut the ties off anymore so I could try to tighten things as I was getting things to the very end. So you can see here that moving forward, I'm not going to be cutting off those ends just so I can keep adjusting them if I can find more ways to tighten it. Then I'm going to turn it around once I had it on both sides of that basket at the middle point of the basket. And then I'm going to do it the very next basket at the very bottom so I can create the framing. I measured out how high I wanted it to be up and I marked so it was the perfect spot across the whole pole system because you don't want to have one that's crooked or a little bit lower because then your basket would be crooked. So now I'm going to take my drill. This part is so easy, I promise friends. You can have someone help you if you don't feel comfortable with the drill and you're simply going to drill in four holes going all the way through the pole on the top side and on the inside so that you get all the way through so you can use your zip ties. And now what we're gonna do is we are gonna take our basket and this part's a little wobbly because you still haven't tightened everything all the way and as you add on more basket, it starts getting stronger and stronger. So you can see here that I'm adding on my poles. Now a trick I learned is make sure you're coming on the side of the basket, not the, the inside of the basket. You can see that originally I was putting it on the longer part and I decided, oh no, I need to put it on the actual ends of the basket so that the poles stay consistent in size all throughout so you can get more baskets on it. Then I went and drilled out more holes where I wanted my next baskets to be. And then I just kept zip tying on more baskets. Now at this point, 
it's becoming stronger, but it's still not as strong as it could be. So I decided to add on another zip tie at the bottom part of the basket. And I'm gonna zoom in in just a second so you can see. But right here, you can see that I'm coming down a little bit lower on that same joint where we put the first zip tie to hold the basket to the pole. I'm putting one down a little bit lower. But then I realized that the zip tie kept wanting to slide up, so I decided to take my pliers, and you can see if you bend it the wrong way, it'll still slide right off. I took my pliers and I bent out that wire just a little bit to create a little catch grip for the zip tie to be able to hold on to the basket. And then at this point, these baskets are on here so sturdy and it really strengthened this whole basket tower organizer. Then at that point, I cut off all of the zip ties and I took it outside and gave it a nice coat of white spray paint. Then I brought it back inside and I patched all of the holes and then painted over it and then at this point, you can distress your basket however you would like. I decided to go really light on my distressing just because I didn't think that it needed too much just for the look I was going for with my house and kind of going off the inspiration. But you could paint these baskets whatever color you want. Could you just imagine what you can do? Now, at the very end, I decided not to put the sign up at the top because I'm gonna be using this probably in my bathroom to organize a bunch of toiletries. But friends, can you even get over the savings? This cost me about 10 to $11 because of all the zip ties, but I saved so much money and it looks identical to what the inspiration was. This DIY at the end, you're gonna see that you can take these cutting mats from the Dollar Tree and turn them into pretty much anything. I love these because they are a strong, sturdy material to work with, but you can also cut them. So I'm taking my ruler and I'm taking my cutting mats and I'm just cutting out a whole bunch of strips. I'm doing a bunch that are two inches thick and then a whole bunch that are one inch thick. I used two packs, so that's four mats, because there's two mats in each pack that comes from the Dollar Tree. Once you've got everything all cut out and you have all your strips, I went ahead and took the smallest ones first, and I'm just gonna cross them over each other. And you can see here that I have four of them, and then I laid a cup on top of it and I creased the lines going up. This is because we are going to weave this into a basket. It is going to look like wood when we're all done and it's gonna look so cool and you basically made this for about a dollar. So you can see here that I put the first bit of glue, then I went around one of those sides. I'm gonna glue that in place and then I'm gonna come back in and I'm just gonna weave. So I'm gonna go in, out, in, out, in, out until I come all the way around to the beginning of that circle where I started. Then I'm gonna glue it in place and cut it. After I got that first row done, I went ahead and moved up. So on the smaller basket, I'm gonna have four, I think maybe even five, I can't remember, but I think it was about four, and I'm just gonna go all the way up, zigzagging back and forth until I get to the top. And then when I get to the top, I'm gonna do something special here. I'm going to take those long pieces that I've been weaving back and forth on, and I'm going to fold one down, leave the other one straight up, and then fold the next one down, leave that one up, fold the next one down, and that's because we're gonna come back in with a stapler and we are gonna staple right on that part to make sure we lock everything in and it's not gonna fall apart on you. And a regular stapler goes through it really easy. Then you're gonna take your scissors and cut off those extra ones. I took mine outside and I gave it a nice coat of a tan spray paint color. Now you can see here on the bigger one, I have the two inch strips and I only did three rows. And then I'm just coming in with a bunch of different colors of paint and I'm just adding that on until I get the desired look that I want. And then I'm gonna take some of this white nautical rope, wrap it around the top and you're ready to use these to display and organize things.
It was a trash day in my neighborhood and my adorable neighbor, she decided to craft and DIY her own shutters and she took off her original shutters that were this really cute minty color and I went and picked them up. I told her I have an idea for them. I'm planning on giving this back to her when I'm all done because she loves farmhouse like I do. So I'm just marking out on this shutter where I want my holes to be and then I'm taking these adorable gold baskets that all of us love from the Dollar Tree and I'm just simply going to zip tie them right onto it. I thought the mint with the gold and black looked so cute and just such a fun thing to be able to use for decor, whatever she decides to put inside of it. I just wanted her to see that you know, since she was DIYing some uh, new shutters, I thought, why not try to show her that, look, you can still use these. And I keep joking with her. She's got to start her own YouTube channel because she's just, she's so crafty out there with her power tools whenever I drive by. So once I've gotten my five trays or my five baskets glued on, I'm going to take these tacks from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to use some E6000 to hold them in place so they don't pop out. And then I'm just going to take a Sharpie marker and color them black. And then using the cute, I love these stickers. Every time they were in stock, I always pick some more up. And I'm just gonna write the market on it. I thought that this would be so adorable. And then I Mod Podged it all down so that it stays in place. Our next project is something I am so excited to share because I have not seen anybody make these. This was an idea I came up with when I was roaming around the Dollar Tree one day. I saw these cutting mats and thought I could turn this in to a really cool thing. So I'm going to tell you what it is at the end. Hang in there so you can see all the steps first. We are going to take some paper. I'm just using an old dictionary that I'm constantly using that I'm ripping pages out to either DIY with or using it to paint on top and I'm going to make a little pattern. So I glued four pieces together and then I made two X's at the center point, drew a line up on the side, curved up at the top and then I ended up folding it in half and cutting along that line. This is often how I make a lot of my patterns and I get things to be even on both sides. Once I got it to the point that I liked it and how it looked the right size, I went ahead and took my Sharpie marker because it worked best on these cutting mats. There's two in a pack, by the way, so it only cost a dollar to make this thing. Just wait, you're gonna be super excited when you see this one because these sell for so much. I can't believe that we can make this for just a dollar and it's super easy to do. Go ahead and take your scissors and cut right on that line. Don't worry about having a little bit of that black showing from your Sharpie marker because we're going to be painting it anyway. So once you've got that part cut out, you're then going to take the second piece and we want to create an opening like a pocket that's kind of pushing out because I wonder if you guys can all guess it by this point because we are going to be turning this into a really cute wall hanging flower container. And you'll see in just a second what kind it is. So at this point, I'm gonna bring it out over an inch on each side, even closer to about an inch and a half, where I wanna be able to have it um, make a big enough opening when I curve it because you want it to be curved. So go ahead and cut that all out. You can see here that I measured it out just like I showed and you've got your two pieces. Now at this point you're going to pull out your stapler, just a regular old stapler that you keep in your house, in your office area, and you are going to staple all the way along that whole edge. If one of the staples doesn't go all the way through, all you have to do is just push it down on the other sides and then just go all along a straight line and staple all the way through. If you have any hangover, just cut that off. Then you're gonna fold back the plastic to create a crease line so it has a nice rounded edge. Bring it over to the other side, staple the top and the bottom so that you can get it 
positioned right and then staple all the way across again. Are you all starting to see what I'm making here? Now you're gonna go ahead and fold back the plastic on the other side. You want to really make sure you crease that so it creates that dome feeling where you can put the flowers down inside or whatever you wanna display inside of it. So here I am where I've got my, my front and my back figured out. Now we have to do the bottom. Now you're gonna take that piece where you cut out the second piece that's curved on the top and you're gonna just find the spot that has the extra that you need to be able to create a bottom for your flower container. And you are going to just trace around it, create enough of a line and cut past a little bit because you wanna have a little overhang. We're gonna trim off once it's all done drying. So you're gonna take some E6000 and a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place short term and long term and you're going to just put it to the side to let it dry i let mine dry for about six hours and then it was good for me to go ahead and start trimming up any extra and then if anything were to pull back you can just add a little bit more of the e6000 as you like so here i am where i've let it dry and i'm trimming off the extra so it has a nice seal at the bottom and then like i said if anything lifts all you got to do is just add a little bit more but mine held really well and I was able to cut away that extra then once you spray paint it you can go ahead and start adding some different tints of gray and you're gonna see here that I'm coming in first with a medium type gray not too dark not too light and I'm just patting it all around because we want to give it that corrugated metal look and we're gonna just keep adding it in so I'm blotting it on first with my paintbrush and then I'm coming back in with a napkin and I just keep tapping it tapping it tapping it so I'm doing all of one color gray first tapping it all in I set it aside because I'm doing two of them for today I'm setting it aside letting it dry and then I'll come back in with an even lighter one and you just keep playing with it until you get that look that you're going for so you don't have to go all the way down inside and you definitely do not have to do the back side because it's going to be hanging on a wall or however you display it you could if you want to and then I went in with a really light color really light gray and then an even lighter white and I just keep tapping it on until it looks like that metal-y look that these flower containers would normally look like. Isn't this so crazy? At this point, each one of these only cost me $1 to make. So here I am, I just keep playing with it and having fun. And I want you to keep in mind, you can make whatever shape you want. You can make them longer and skinny. You can make them just whatever length or height or width you want them to be. Then once you've got it all dried, you can go ahead and add in some of those form squares from the Dollar Tree and then add in some florals of your liking. I went very neutral because I want to keep these up all year long. I have a place in my basement I think I'm going to put them so I wanted to make sure that they were long term and I added in some boxwood stems off of a long garland that I have from Hobby Lobby. I just, I'm always cutting it apart. I paid 10 bucks for that long garland. It was the best investment. You can see there on the back side that the foam squares were there. I didn't spray paint the back of it because again, nobody's going to see it. But if you wanted to spray paint it, you totally could. So just keep playing with your floor arrangement until you get it to a place where you really like it and it looks really pretty to you. And again, have fun with this part. Use whatever florals you want. You don't have to do it like me. Now this is an important part if you decide to put a little tag on the front just like I did. I decided to cut a little flap open and then I added some hot glue down inside of it so that way the foam stays in there permanently. I pushed the flap back and then I added some more hot glue and added a cute little tag to the front. I think that the tag being on this makes this even more high end. Again, something that you would see from Magnolia Home. I just love these so much. Now on the back side, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you cut a hole as well so that you're able to hang it up anywhere in your home. And I just think they're so cute with two of these paired together on a wall. For this DIY, we're gonna be using two of these white wire Dollar Tree baskets. 
one of these wood pallets that you can get in the craft section and then I have this stair railing that I had left over from another project that I picked up at a repurposing store. I started by drilling a hole in the bottom that way I can bring in two screws to make sure it's tightened nice to that wood pallet. Then I'm going to take my wire cutters and cut out two circles. They're kind of almost in the shape of an oval just because of the way the wire is in the bottom of these two baskets. And then I'm going to come in with my drill again and I'm going to drill a hole one way and then I'm going to drill a hole the other way. That way so there's this cross hole that's going through both sides of the bottom of this stair railing. And that's because we're going to run in two zip ties going in those opposite directions and then we're going to bring back in that wire basket. It's simply going to be able to slide right down into place and then I'm going to take those zip ties, I'm going to bring them up into the wire basket and then I'm going to zip tie that basket right onto my wood railing and it's going to hold nice and firm with these two crossed zip ties. Then I'm going to repeat that same process for the top basket and then I'm going to bring that right down, find the spacing that I want between the two baskets, mark it, and then go ahead and drill my holes, doing the same thing, going one direction and then the other direction. Once I've got my two holes, I went back in with the wire and the zip ties and nicely tightened everything into place. You can see here that they're not going anywhere because the zip ties are pulled extremely tight. Then up at the top, I wanted to add a knob I thought this would be really cute, so I drilled a hole at the top of the wood railing, took one of these dowel sticks, and then these wooden balls, I actually picked these up from Hobby Lobby with a 40% off coupon, and then I'm just going to go ahead and glue that all into place so it doesn't pop off if it gets bumped or dropped. It'll stay nice and tight and secure on top of the railing. Then I made sure I gave everything a nice coat of white paint. Then I took two of my favorite gardening tags that you guys know I use here all the time on my channel. I added some hot glue, flipped it over, added more hot glue on the back to make sure it's all locked into place. And then to give it that enamel metal look, I'm taking some black paint and going around the top of the basket. Now we could leave it as is, but I wanted to make the bottom look more farmhouse and add in some boxwood. So I glued on some foam squares left over from the first project and then I'm just adding in that greenery as much as I like and you're ready to use. This inspiration also came from Antique Farmhouse, a store I love. These were $34 for a set of two of them. We're gonna do ours way, way more affordable and a fraction of the cost. Now here's the thing. I actually, as I was making this, decided to custom mine a little bit more. I decided to do more of a wood look around them versus the concrete look but you definitely could do the concrete look if you decide to just paint these boxes that I'm about to make and show you. So you can see here that I got my measurements based off of what my inspiration was. I'm going to go ahead and just use some foam core, trace it right on there, cut it down to size and now I'm going to start gluing my box together. I put the sides on first with a bead of glue and then I come back in in the corner and I add on some extra glue to strengthen the inner part of the box. Now you can see at this point you definitely could you know just paint it and get that look but I wanted to have more of a farmhouse look versus a modern look to my little planter box. Now this is something I always recommend. I always build my sides out and then I add glue and then put that box down onto the foam core so that way you have a perfect box on the bottom and it's the right size and you don't have anything wonky at the bottom. So I'm now going to just take my craft knife once I've got that glued in place, go ahead and cut it out and you've got yourself a completed box that cost I don't know pennies at this point because I didn't use the full board so you can definitely get a ton of planters out of one piece of foam core 
and do these as like a centerpiece at a party, a reception. Now I'm gonna take my foam square from the Dollar Tree, I'm gonna cut it down to size and just glue that into place. Now this is where mine starts to be different from what the inspiration was. I decided to use a pack of popsicle sticks to show you that yes, you could paint it the color and get that concrete look, but I'm gonna use popsicle sticks to show you that you could also do a very pretty wood shiplap look on this box. So I'm just taking my popsicle sticks, cutting them down to the sizes that I need, and I'm just gonna keep layering them. On the sides, I did a straight line, but on the front and the back, I went ahead and altered the pattern to make it look more like shiplap or a hardwood floor maybe, I, I don't know. I just really liked alternating the pattern that was on it. It really made it look pretty and, I don't know, a higher end look. Now I'm gonna take some white paint, dry brush that on, take some round paint, dry brush that on, and once that was off to the side and drying, I took my greenery picks that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna be using three. I've got this one that kinda looks more like not celery, maybe cilantro, <laughs> I don't know. But I really did love this pick, I thought it was so pretty. And then you can see over to the left, I've got the white floral with the green, and then I brought in a really big leaf, you'll see at the end of this segment right here. So I'm just cutting everything off of the actual pick stem. I like doing that because I feel like you have more control and it looks more natural to cut them apart and then put them in where you want. And then once I had them all positioned, I went ahead and took some twine, wrapped it around a few times, and then tied a knot and added a bow. I love how mine turned out. Again, you definitely could paint yours gray and get that same look, but I wanted you to see, look at how much I saved. And if you have some of these florals already on hand, it would cost even less, but I put 550 because I kind of counted everything that you would need if you went to the store right now to buy it. These are the supplies we're gonna be using. One pack of long barbecue skewer sticks and two grass hula skirts from the Dollar Tree. We're gonna take three foam squares from the Dollar Tree and glue them together as well. This is gonna become our support system to be able to hold up our long skewer sticks. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to create a cut line where I know that I want all of them to be the same height. And then I'm gonna use some pliers to just cut them and break them all apart. And we're gonna need quite a few of these. I'm not gonna give the exact number because I want you to be able to make the size you want. You can either do it really big or really small. It's depending on whatever size you want and the possibilities of these baskets are endless. So you can see here that I am using one skewer stick and I'm getting two out of it because I'm cutting them down to size. And then what I did was I put my two longest ones out to the side and then I'm filling them in. So I have two long ones out to the side they're kind of tilted out two in the middle and then there's four in between each of those joints and then as you see from the top view it creates an oval shape that way we can create an envelope basket now we're going to take our hula skirt and you can see that I'm just sliding these little knotted long pieces of raffia or I guess, hula skirt grass that they wanna say it is. We need six of them. And so I'm just taking them, unwrapping them, and then I'm just gonna lay them all nice and flat so I can gather together six. Because every time you have six, you're gonna be able to weave them onto our skewer sticks. So right now to start, I twisted it really tight just to make sure I had a nice knot to begin. I'm gonna just knot that right around on one of the spots. And then once I've got that there, I'm gonna go ahead and just start going in and out, in and out, in and out, all the way around the skewer sticks. Come up at the top, it's the easiest way to do it. I like to hold my finger down there at the bottom as I'm trying to weave back and forth so that way things don't pop off. In the beginning, it is a little bit tricky getting it started just because the 
skewer sticks are not glued in. You do not want to glue them in because when we're done, we're going to pull them off and I'm going to show you that step on how to finish the bottom side of your basket. But right now we're just doing the weaving part. So you can see here that I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And as you're going, you're going to start noticing that there's going to be a pattern. You want to be on one side of the stick and then the next side when you pass it around the second loop, when you come all the way around the track. So at the end of your raffia, your long, I guess, <laughs> hula skirt grass, you're going to want to make sure you're always tying back on the next section. So you can see here that I took the end that I was weaving with, and then I took six more, and I just tied a simple knot, made sure it was nice and tight enough, not too tight, you don't want a really, really obvious knot, but tight enough to hold it in place, and then I cut off the extra, and then as you're weaving it, those knots should just naturally fall on the inside when you're weaving it, just make sure you're securing it towards the inside of the basket so you don't see the knots on the outside. And I just keep playing with this. This project was really fun, and surprisingly, it only took me, I'm gonna say probably about 40 minutes to do this. It really wasn't bad at all. I actually had something on, I was watching on the Hallmark channel. So I thought, oh, I'll just watch a movie while I'm doing this. And it went really quick. And I was so impressed that I was able to make a basket out of just hula skirts and shish kebab sticks. Not shish kebab sticks. I always want to call them that. You all know that if you've been here for a while, skewer sticks. So here I am. I'm just going to continue to create this pattern over and over again until I get to a height that I like. And at this point, just so you can see the details, this is what it looks like. It looks exactly like a basket, friends, exactly. Can you believe this out of a grass skirt and uh, some skewer sticks? Now at this point, you can see that I have decided to stop. I really like the look of my basket right at this point. And I'm taking some hot glue, and this is how we're gonna finish off the top to look really nice and polished. We're taking some hot glue and sticking it underneath the grass that we've weaved on and we are going to just glue it all into place onto the sticks. This is going to create it to be nice and strong without anything falling off and having any issues. And you notice that I did that top part before I pulled off the bottom because I want to make sure it's nice and secure and in place. Then at the bottom, you're going to just pull back what you have weaved onto those sticks, pull the sticks out gently from the foam, and then repeat the process as well at the bottom, making sure you're gluing everything into place so everything is nice and snug. I didn't go crazy with the glue. I just put a couple little dots and make sure I push things down so that they would all hold into place. And then once that was all secure, I could go in and I could cut off the rest of the sticks. I also forgot to mention when I went around that space with the sticks, one last time weaving, I made sure I tied a knot and then I cut off the extra of that raffia grass so that way it was nice and finished and then I tucked the knot down in and glued that into place. Now that everything has been secure and it's over to the side, we're going to work on braiding some of this long raffia grass. I just took a knot, tied it at the top of several pieces of it, and when you're making your basket, I used about one and a half grass skirts to make the basket part, and then this over here was what was left over. I used about a fourth of the leftover of the grass skirt to be able to create this braided piece that we're going to be using at the bottom and for a hang-up handle for our basket. So once I braided all the way down, I tied a knot on the other side, and now we're at the bottom of the basket. We're gonna pinch it closed. So you can see here that I'm adding hot glue, and then I'm using my pliers to just pinch it down in there nice and tight. I want it to be nice and secure. Once I went all the way around and I glued all of that into place, I was able to then go on with my braided rope that I just did, that you saw me do. And now we're just gonna glue that around the bottom to make it have a really nice finish. And this is gonna make it look like you weaved it at the bottom, having this braided rope here. Okay, at this point, I wanted to give it that cute farmhouse look, because y'all know I love that. I'm taking some gingham fabric and I'm just cutting it down to size and wrapping it over the top. Now at this point, I'm going to take that extra piece of that braid that we used towards the bottom. 
and I'm gonna put it on the back. You could see there for a second I was thinking about maybe adding a darker rope to it and then no, I still decided to stick with this lighter grass raffia. I really liked the way that it looked. And then I just tied another knot where I cut it off the extra from the bottom and now I'm gluing it onto the back with a lot of glue. I want to make sure it's on there nice and secure. So this is going to be hanging up somewhere in my home. I think I'm going to hang it on the island in my kitchen. You will most likely be seeing this in a home decor real soon. So then once I glued on that back part and I also disguise it with an extra piece of fabric so it looks really polished, I took this round piece of foam that you can get from the Dollar Tree and I put it down inside the basket because I wanted it to stay open and nice and chubby looking <laughs> we're going to use the word chubby but i wanted it to look you know full so now at this point i'm just taking some eucalyptus that i found really cheap during all of these sales they've been having um, some hydrangea and then some of the cotton stems from the dollar tree now we can stop here or add a little something extra which you all know i love to do i'm taking one of these little garden tags that they were selling at springtime i popped off the back added lots of hot glue and just put that right on the front of my basket For this DIY, we're going to be taking six of these super popular galvanized corrugated metal frames with clips on them, some painter sticks, and then some of these really large tongue depressor sticks that I get from Walmart. I'm going to take apart the frame, pop off the back, and then with my little eyeglass screw kit, I'm just going to take off that tiny little screw and we're going to just save those because I'm sure on another day I'll find a use for these little clips. And then we're going to just glue everything back into place and the part where I popped off the back, I'm putting that part inside the frame so that the back of this looks really nice and finished. Then I'm going to take two of them and glue those together on their sides. I'm making sure that the holes are going opposite direction you can see right there i wanted to make sure that they were going out so it didn't look like you have two random holes in the middle and then i put two together the long way two together the long way and then i'm taking the fifth and the sixth frame and that's going to become the sides of a darling crate with a handle that we're making so we're just going to add some glue and then we're going to come back in with our staple gun and we're going to just secure it to make sure that everything is nice and snug and not going to come apart. I don't always just trust hot glue when it comes to certain things. I like to secure things because I don't want things to break and fall apart on me. As I use them when I make them, I want to make sure they last forever. Then on the inside, I'm going to take my painter stick and I'm just going to add a whole bunch of hot glue in there and I'm going to glue that right into place. And then I'm going to come back in with my staple gun and add a couple staples to make sure everything is nice and secure. Once I've got the two handles on, one on opposite side of each other on the shorter parts of this box, I'm going to cut off the top and the bottom of these long sticks that you can get from Walmart and I'm going to make sure that the right length of the end of the box and this is going to become the base of our box. Now I don't, again, just trust hot glue. I think that that can pop off really easily. So I'm gonna come back in with my staple gun and I'm just gonna pop on one staple at each one of the sticks on the top and the bottom to make sure everything is nice and secure. And then at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add on the handle. Now I have this dowel stick that I have in my craft room from the home improvement store, but you can honestly use a plunger stick for this. And I'm just going to cut it down with my miter box and my saw and then I'm going to go ahead and screw that into place using my drill. I always like to pre-drill holes anytime, anytime I ever work with these painter sticks because they can splinter quite easily. So I always pre-drill the hole first to make sure things go through nice and smooth without having any problem. And then I just drill it all into place. And now at this point you can add whatever color paint you want to it, distress it, and it will look so adorable to use in your home for any season year round.
For this project, you're gonna need nine of these boxes. I picked these all up from the Dollar Tree around Christmas time, but they definitely have them all year round. Then with a ruler, I'm gonna be creating two angled lines and then a little bit of a lip on the box. This is going to be done on three of the boxes. Now you can see here I'm using my big scissors as I'm coming in along the side, but as I got to that corner, I realized a little pair of scissors were much better for that, so it didn't cause any of the box to rip. So just take your time when you're cutting around those corners and making sure that you're not forcing that cardboard because it will rip if you're not careful. So once I came up the side and I had that part all cut, I repeated that two more times for my other boxes. Then I took some hot glue and some E6000 because I really wanted it to hold well together because I want to keep this forever. I love this thing. I'm now going to just glue those together so it's a nice strong hold. And then I'm going to use some of these clips from the Dollar Tree. These are just the cutest and I find that they're so helpful in my craft room. Now I've got three at the top and I'm going to continue down with three more just regular boxes not cut and then I'm gonna go down to the bottom and then do another row of three. Once I had everything all glued nice and tight and firmly in place, I took it outside and gave it a nice coat of gray spray paint. Now we're gonna be creating a galvanized look. It's really simple to do. You're just dabbling on paint on top of the gray spray paint that you originally had. I went from a dark to a medium to a light gray and then very tiny bits here and there of white. We want the white to be that part where it just kind of shines when you look at that galvanized metal. And then I just use a paper towel and I just keep dabbing it around until I get the look that I like, but you want all of those colors to come through. Now I'm taking some long painter sticks and I'm cutting them down to the size that I need of the length of my container that I'm making here. And this inspiration came from one of my favorite online stores. I will link it down below. They most likely have sold out in this particular item, but I love these things. I feel like you can put so many fun things inside of them, and it's just so fun to be able to decorate on a shelf for a holiday. I just, I think they're so cute. And the inspiration that it came from, it was so expensive. This, I'm seriously making it for maybe about $10, $11 versus the price that it is listed down below in my description box. Now I'm just simply adding some tags, screwing it in with an eyeglass screwer, and it's ready to be decorated. Isn't crafting just the best? Leave a comment down below to let me know how long you have been a crafter and what you really love to make the most. I always love reading your comments. I can't always respond to every single one of them, but I just love reading them. So thank you for everyone who always does. Now, if you are returning or you're new and you haven't clicked the subscribe button, please do click that button and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so you don't miss more videos coming here in the future. Thanks so much for stopping by and visiting with me today. And until the next episode, bye friends.